Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is David Kenny, and I'm the pastor here at Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas. And we are in our third week of Advent. And my guess is you probably already know the Christmas story. You've heard it many times before, but have you ever stopped to think about the significance of the Christmas story? I mean, have you ever asked yourself why? Why did Jesus come to earth? Well, sadly, this story has become so familiar that I think it gets drowned out by the world. And, and sometimes we don't even give the Christmas story more than a passing thought on our hurried rush to the gifts that are under the tree. But see, that very first Christmas, that story has major importance and it has enormous implications for us all. The book of Isaiah has a prophecy about Christmas, and it says in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord shines over you. God our Father bent the heavens and has come down to dwell with us. In doing my study for this, I came across an article about the April 12th, 1961 Russian space launch. Uh, there was a cosmonaut. He was the first human to travel into space and to orbit the Earth. And while he was up there, the cosmonaut said, I don't see any God up here. Well, in response to that statement, C.S. Lewis wrote down these words. He said, If there is a God that created us, we would not discover him by going up into the air. God does not relate to us the way a man on the second floor would relate to a man on the first floor. Now, he would relate to us the way Shakespeare relates to Hamlet. Shakespeare is the creator of Hamlet's world and of Hamlet himself. Hamlet can know about Shakespeare only if the author reveals information about himself in the play. So too, the only way to know about God is if God has revealed himself. I love that. God revealing himself. Isn't that what that first Christmas was? That's the meaning. That's the answer to why glory touching earth. You see, in the Christmas story, God has revealed himself in the play. And that play is unfolding in the lives of all of us. But God goes even beyond just that. He goes so far as to actually write himself into our story. And then he enters into the story, but not as a hero, as a baby. Why? Well, also that he can reveal himself to us. And it happens in the most profound way. See, this Christmas story is glory touching earth. And it happens in a fragile way, it happens in a vulnerable way. And it's so that we can relate to him. God enters into our story. Yes, today, the story has become very familiar and the scenes that take place all became common. But that very first Christmas was radical and it was something that no one was expecting because God doesn't just come to restore creation to him. He goes even further than that by walking in our shoes and he suffers our pain all so that we can relate. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said it like this. He said, only a suffering God can help. You know, I hear skeptics and doubters. They ask, what's so special about Christianity? I mean, aren't all religions basically the same? No. <laughs> No, no other faith has a God that willingly suffered for his people. No other religion has a God that can so deeply and compassionately identify with his creation. You know, another familiar verse, I think is also a Christmas story. And it's found in John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This 
is where our Savior meets us in our world. Because you see, humanity longs for intimate relationships. I mean, sure, we hide it, we pretend we don't need it, we boast about how we can get by on our own, but at our core, we were built for community. And so the Christmas story, it shows us that God, the creator of the universe, wanted a relationship with us so much that he was willing to enter into our story. And he enters into our pain in order to show love and in order to show how much he desires us. That's what Christians mean when they say that this story is good news. Did you know that the word Noel means Christmas in French? But Noel can also mean good news. Noel even means birthday because the French word Noel comes from the Latin word natalis, meaning birthday. So it makes sense then that Noel is a word that we use in English when we celebrate and share the good news of the birth of Jesus. And it's also no wonder that many of our Christmas songs contain the word Noel, like sing we all Noel, because Jesus is the song. He is the song of Christmas and his birth, his birthday is why we sing. Matthew 1 verse 22 and 23 say, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. In Jesus, God would continue to carry out his mission in a very unique way by becoming a man in order to save the world, but not from the outside, but from the inside. Philip Yancey writes, God desires what power can never win. He is a king who wants not subservience, but love. Thus, rather than mowing down Jerusalem, Rome, and every other world's power, he chose the slow, hard way of incarnation, love, and death, a conquest from within. Emmanuel, God with us. Emmanuel to rescue, to redeem, and to restore our relationship with him. What is the significance of the name Emmanuel? Well, the passage in Isaiah that we read earlier, it foreshadows the coming Messiah, and it gives us hints as to the way in which he would enter the world. Isaiah says his name shall be Emmanuel. The meaning of Emmanuel is that God would dwell among his people. Because see, up until this point, the Israelites had only seen a God that was secured and secluded in a golden box. And that lived in a golden temple. And that was all they knew. I mean, the thought that God would one day take on human flesh was just beyond their wildest dreams. So when John begins his telling of the Christmas story, he adopts that Isaiah language in a very unique way. And I love how the message translation interprets John chapter one, verse 14. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. That is what Emmanuel means. That even in the worst of places, God is with us. He has moved into our neighborhood. This further shows God's desire for a relationship. I mean, rather than making us do all the work, rather than making us go to him, glory touches earth. So, knowing that, how should we respond? The question we should be asking, Christmas, familiar or not, how do we live in light of knowing the story? And while there are plenty of things that we could take away from this, I think there is something that we just simply can't afford to miss. And that is God's desire for you. See, many of us, we have this view of God that he's just waiting for us to screw up so he can punish us. But that's not God's desire for you at all. And like we pointed out earlier, he wants a relationship with you. He's not waiting for you to screw up so that he can say, gotcha, and then throw you into hell. No, it's actually quite the opposite. He was willing 
to enter into your pain, into your suffering, so that you could relate to him and so he could give you hope. This is why Christmas is glory touching earth. God is showing us that he wants a relationship and it's of mutual choosing. He's never going to force us. It's our choice to follow him or not. That's the answer to why. That's why he came as a baby, not as a conquering king. Christmas is about love, not subservience. I know you've heard this Christmas story a thousand times, but let it soak in. The creator of the universe came down to earth, walked in your shoes, felt what you feel, all in pursuit of his people and all because of you. Psalm 29, verse 1 and 2 says, Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Before I close, I'd like to remind you that the significance of the Christmas story is not just limited to us personally. I mean, Christmas does remind us of God's desire for us, but see, at the same time, it's a gift. Christmas is a gift for us to give to others. That's how the good news works. It's not just for our benefit. It's a present for us to give to others. Glory touched earth and entered into the story. And we know the story, don't we? But we also know our story. We know our past. We know our shame. We even know our sin. See, in the Christmas story tells us that God isn't scared by our messiness. God isn't scared by our sin. And so we should treat our neighbor the same way. You know, there are people all around us that are hurting. Their lives are messy. They're broken. And they are also full of sin. So just as Jesus enters into our story, we then enter into theirs. And yes, it's going to be messy and difficult and it won't be easy. But that's exactly what Jesus did for us. And so he asks us to do the same. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. You're, you're thinking, well, how could I do that? I don't have all the answers. I'm still working on myself. I wouldn't even know what to say. I, I mean, how can one person make a difference? I get it. But, you know, just your presence is greater than your ability to solve their problems. Just be there for them. Just love them. And then you allow Jesus to do all the work. We just need to be present in the lives of others, just like Jesus is present with us. Christmas is an all too familiar story. And when December rolls around, every pastor in every church is gonna teach the same story and is gonna use these same characters. But see, just being able to recall the Christmas story, that's not the entire story. We should also be able to explain why? Why did glory touch earth? It was for this, so that we could relate and so that there could be reconciliation. God brought his people back to him. Christmas is the beautiful story of a God willing to leave heaven in pursuit of his people. And so, may we never forget the significance of Christmas, and may we never stop showing others his love. Have a blessed day. Have a Merry Christmas.